a stepping stone to the next. Um, it's really important that you do the best that you can to attend live, and you will get the most out of it. Okay. So, uh, for those of you that are Premium Plus members and that will be continuing on after this course uh, to bring your guitar playing to that higher level, it is, uh, we do have the Technique, Creative, and Skills semester. So the entire program, the Foundation semester, the Ultimate Guitar Program, is designed to take you, uh, take your playing, right, where you're just kind of in your bedroom, in your sitting room, and to have the skills, if you want, to play in front of people. Whether it's at a party, whether it's at a, a family gathering, or even an open mic, or a session, or, or even uh, on stage. Alright? So that's where you will be after the Ultimate Guitar Program. Alright, now, each of you have taken your first steps towards achieving your objectives. Just by showing up today, you are taking control and are on the path to success. So, how do you achieve success? It's simple. Keep showing up to the live lessons, okay? Attending live is interactive, it's fun and engaging, and our live attendees have a far higher completion rate than those who only do the recordings. All right, so this will give you a higher sense of achievement you're going to progress, develop, and ultimately succeed. And I want to make sure that you have this positive attitude that you can do this. And every time you pick up the guitar, you think to yourself, or if you want to even say it out loud, I can. I can do this, and I will do this. Okay? So have that attitude, and you will. So, are you all ready to get started? Are you all ready for this? Alright, so, I want to quickly talk about the styles of music, okay, because I have students from all over the world with lots of different tastes in music, some like classical, some like Spanish style flamenco, some are only into pop music, but uh, again, pop music can differ depending on what country you live in, um, you know, I have lots of students that are into rock and roll and heavy metal, I have students into punk, other students that are into reggae. I have students that adore the blues and jazz. Uh, and I have students that are into R&B, that's rhythm and blues. You know, I have students uh, from all different parts of the world that are into spiritual and gospel music. Uh, I have students that are in, into hip-hop, all right? Other students on the other end of the spectrum that are really into country music or folk music. And again, folk music can uh, varies uh, depending on what country and, or what region you live. All right? There's people that are into independent music. Also, people into electronic music. Right? And there's so many other genres of music that I have not listed and have not mentioned because there's just so many. The point of what I'm trying to say here is, ladies and gentlemen, whatever style of music that you like, or styles of music that you like, whatever style of music that you hope to play on the guitar, everything that we learn in this course, everything that you will learn in this course, everything that you will learn in the UGP is designed to enable you to play any sort of style that you want. Okay? Anything. Okay? So if you're into classical music, the skills that you're going to learn is going to help you play classical guitar. If you are into rock and roll, the skills that you're going to learn on this course will help you play the guitar in the rock and roll genre and so on. Alright? So, I just wanted to get that out there again because I get so many questions from so many students from different parts of the world. Well, you know, is this course, like, relative to me, all right, because I listen to this and that? Of course it is, all right, because there's one instrument, that's the guitar that you all have in your hands probably right now, and there's one technique that can be used for everything, okay? So... Time to level up, all right? 
And now I want to talk a little bit about the language of music. Okay? Now, some of this is going to be a little bit dry. Some of this might be even a little bit boring. Okay? But I promise you, once we get through it, and once we learn it, we're never going to have to come back to it again. So Also, you can refer to the material in your toolkits, all right, for all of this. Make sure to check your summary notes, as that will be, all of this material will be in there, okay? But this is really important because, you know, I'm going to talk about different musical terms, and each and every one of you need to make sure that you understand that I'm talking about, all right? So, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do when we're speaking in terms of language of music and language of guitar is we need to know our fingers and hand movements. We also need to know the parts of the guitar and also we need to talk about standard tuning and notation. Okay, now, uh, a couple things here before I continue. Uh, when we get to the parts of the guitar, I'm going to go through that very quickly because that is in your toolkits and you can always refer to that. And also there will be uh, a tuning bonus lesson uploaded into your toolkits as well. So for those of you that want to learn how to tune your guitars, there's a bonus lesson for you in your toolkits. And I do encourage you to watch that lesson, enjoy it and come back to me with any questions. All right, so, the first thing that we do on the guitar, that we will have to do on the guitar, is place our fingers on the fretboard, to press our fingers on the fretboard in such a way that the note sounds clear and full. Okay, so... We're going to get to what all of those things mean in just a second, but basically fretting is when I'm putting my finger or fingers down onto this part, and that is called fretting. And then when I play, a nice clear note comes out. Now I'm going to show you how to fret in just a few moments uh, later on in today's lesson, but until then, I'm going to continue on. Because we need to know what the names of our fingers are. All right, now you know you have an index finger, a middle ring, and a pinky finger or baby finger, whatever you call it. All right, but when in guitar speak, when I'm talking about fingers, when I'm asking you to press your fingers, I use a numbered name. All right, so your index finger is the first finger. All right. The middle finger is the second finger. The ring finger is the third finger, right? And the pinky finger is the fourth finger. So we have first finger, second finger, third finger, and the fourth finger, okay? So if I tell you, place your first finger onto the fretboard, all right? You take your index finger, your first finger, and you place it wherever it is that I tell you. Okay, now, we have another term, and this is a term that we use to actually make a sound, to make a tone, and this is called picking, right, guitar picking, and you can use a finger or a device called a plectrum, and I'll talk about that later on in the class as well, all right, and you use either your fingers or the plectrum to play a single note. Okay, so that is guitar picking, and again, I'll talk about more of that later. Now, if we are using our fingers to pick the guitar, right, to play single notes on the guitar, okay, all right, there's names that we use for our finger, for our fingers as well, and this comes from the Spanish. All right, names for the fingers, because the Spanish were the major innovators of guitar playing uh, in, uh, in the past. So um, this terminology has stuck even in English as well. So we call the thumb the P finger. The I is the index finger, M is the middle finger, and A is the ring finger. And again, 
You're going to need to know this because sometimes when we finger pick, we need to know with which fingers we must pick. So this gives is going to be able to give us clear and precise direction on that. So again, okay, we have the thumb, all right, is my P finger, I is the index finger, okay, M is the middle finger, and A is the ring finger. Now, a question that I get a lot is, do we finger pick with our baby finger? Right? Do we finger pick with our baby finger? And the answer to that question is no. We do not. Okay? So, uh, this is very important because uh, the baby finger, the pinky finger, is the shortest and also the weakest finger. So we can pretty much do everything that we need to do with the other fingers. Alright? The last bit of fingers and hand movements that we need to know is what is called strumming. Alright? And this is the techni technique that's used to play the guitar by sweeping your fingers, or if you're using a plectrum, your plectrum up or down across the strings. Right, so that's when I do something like that, or with the plectrum. All right. Now, any questions? Do I have any questions for everybody before I continue? All right, so just to uh, wrap this up, right, we now know that we must do this thing called fretting, and we do that with our first, second, third, and fourth fingers. Right? Then we also do an act called picking, which, which is, means that we play a single note. And we do that with our fingers, all right? or with our plectrum. If we're doing it with our fingers, all right? remember what the names of the fingers are, P-I-M-A. And then we also have this hand movement of strumming. All right, so I haven't seen any questions come in. About it, so I think everybody uh, hopefully is good. All right, now I'm going to talk about the different parts of the guitar, and I'm going to go through this very, very, very quickly. Again, all of this information will be in your toolkits, and uh, the reason why I want to get through this part uh, quickly is so we can get to actually playing the guitar as soon as possible. All right, and. I, you know, that's why all of you are here. <laughs> all right. So, uh, first things first, the body is the largest part of the guitar. For an acoustic guitar, this is where the sound emanates. Okay. Now, we have the neck of the guitar, and this is the piece of wood that extends from the body. Okay. And on the neck, we have the fretboard. All right. And... The fretboard is divided into what we call frets, okay? And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. The frets are vertical, all right, are vertical metal strips inserted into the fretboard, okay? And so, again, what is that exactly? As you can see on the picture, it is these vertical metal strips that divide the guitar Okay, into all of the different notes. Okay, so, again, here we have, this here is my first fret. So if I tell you to play the first fret, you play right behind it, you press your finger right behind it. Then we have this second vertical metal strip, the second fret, right? And if I ask you to play the second fret, you place your finger right behind the fret. You never place your fingers onto the fret because the sound that you're going to get is this buzzing sound instead of a nice, clear sound. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit more about fretting later um, again. But just to reiterate, when I ask you to press a certain fret, right, you're pressing right behind that whatever fret I'm asking you to press. Now, the headstock 
is the part of the uh, guitar that is furthest from the body. Um, and on the headstock are located the tuning pegs, right, which we loosen and tighten uh, to tune our guitars. Right, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to spend much time on this, but it's very important that you know which string is connected or attached to which tuning peg when you're tuning your guitar, and this is something that I talk a lot more of in the bonus tuning lesson. Okay, so we have the body, the neck, uh, the fretboard, frets, the headstock, and the tuning pegs. Okay, um, next I want to talk a little bit about uh, how we're going to talk about our musical ideas and express our musical ideas with each other, All right? and uh, what's going to enable you to actually play in rhythm and in time, okay, and the first thing is called time signature, and this means that we... Uh, are given a certain amount of beats per measure. Now, I'm going to talk about what a measure is in just a second. All right? Before I do that, I want to make sure that you all know the time signature is made up of two numbers. For all intents and purposes, the top number for now is the most important number because the top number is the number that gives us the amount of beats per measure. Okay, so... This time signature tells me that there will be four beats per measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. Okay? This time signature, again, I look at the top number. Okay? This time signature tells me that there will be six beats per measure. Okay? Again, we only want to focus on the top number. Again, don't worry about the bottom number for now. If and when we need to discuss the bottom number, we will. And uh, even in the Ultimate Guitar Program, we rarely ever have to even talk about this bottom number. So again, it is that top number that is most important. Okay? Now, again, you might be thinking to yourself, you might be asking, well, what is a measure? Okay? A measure or it's also called a bar, and we'll see why in a second. All right? A measure is a certain space in music right, that has a designated number of beats. Right? And in written music, all right, it's delineated by vertical lines, which we call bars. Okay? So, again, Western music, well, again, for the first time, Western music is divided into much smaller parts, right? So any sort of composition that's written in West, Western music is divided into much smaller parts, into individual units. And these individual units we call measures and have a certain amount of beats in them that is designated by the time signature. So what does that mean here, right? How many beats per measure does this time signature tell me? Okay, how many beats per measure does this time signature show me? Okay, is the how many beats or what is the time signature? Okay, uh, what is Gary, Andrew, John, Saeed? Very good. All right, there are four beats right, per measure, all right, or what we call this time signature to be is 4-4, four, four. okay, now, next question is, how many measures are there, how many measures are there, how many measures do we see, very good, Linda, okay, Gary, yes, very good, very good, uh, who else, uh, John, yes, absolutely very good, Paul, uh, almost, Paul, almost, all right, Andrew, very good, all right, there are two measures, okay, so here we would count this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay, now the reason I, I talk about this 
now is because we're going to see measures, we're going to be using a system of writing uh, music, and we're going to get into actually counting in rhythm in lesson five and onwards, all right, but we're still going to set the basics and the foundation now and throughout the next few lessons, okay? Now, who here has seen this before? Who here has seen anything like this before? Okay. Yes, Stephen has. John has. All right. Wonderful. Um, Michelle has. All right. Orla. Andrew says seen it, but don't understand it. Well, let me tell you this. We don't actually have to understand this to play the guitar, so don't worry. We're not going to learn how to do this in this course, and it's something we get a little bit into in the UGP, but... We don't need this if we want to play the guitar, okay? But we need to have a method to write down the sounds that we hear, okay? We need to use another method so you can do what I ask you to do and so that it is clear for us to communicate. Now, luckily, right, what we're going to use is something that is much more simple, much more straightforward, and much more intuitive than all these dots and shapes and circles and so on and so forth, okay? What we're going to use is called tablature notation. Now, you might have seen something like this as well. Maybe you were trying to learn a song and, you know, this the, all these new lines and numbers came up, didn't have an idea what was going on. Well, I'm going to show everybody and we're going to go through this, and by the end of the next five minutes, you will understand how tablature notation works, okay? What we see here, first and foremost, is the standard tuning of a guitar, and this is very important. We need to know the names of the strings on the guitar, because before we do anything, Again, we need to know what it is that we are holding and playing. Okay? So, we have the low E string, the A string, D string, G, B, and high E string. Alright? Now, I'm going to go through that again. Okay? I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Alright? So, you can see. There we are. Alright? We have this low E string. Even though it is on top, all right, even though it is on top, this is called the low E string, all right, relative to the higher pitch, high E string, all right, so we have the low E string, all right, it's the first string when I'm looking down on my guitar, all right, it's the thickest string, so I have the low E string, the A string, the D string, the G string, the B string, and the high E string. Okay? So these are the names of the strings. And why is this important? Why do we need to know this now? Alright, well first, uh, during the tuning lesson, you will need to know that because that's what you need to um, tune your strings to. But also for tablature notation. This is very important. Okay? Because alright, the horizontal lines represent the strings. Alright? I'm going to say that again. The horizontal line represents the strings. So here I am. Alright? So what we're going to do is now say here we have the bottom line, alright, is this low E string. So it's kind of flipped a little bit. So you kind of have to, you know, flip your mind around a little bit for this. Right? But again, once you get it, it, it's very, very intuitive. Right? So we have the low E string. Right? That's the bottom line. Then the next line above that is the A string. The open A string. The next string after that is the D string. Right? It's just like the strings all right, in standard tuning. Then we have the G string, then the B, and then the high E string. Okay? Any questions so
so far? Any questions so far uh, about about this? All right. Any questions so far before I continue? All right. I think everybody is kind of uh, getting it. All right. Hopefully. Okay. Now, the numbers, all right, the second element of tablature notation are the numbers. And the numbers represent the frets that we need to press. All right. Now, here we have a zero. And this is uh, probably, uh, might be the most confusing bit, is because there is no zero fret. All right. What the zero fret means is that we play the open string. That open string. So, what we see here, sorry again, all right? So the zero means we play the open string of the corresponding line. So again, here we have the zero, right, fret, right? So whether you're using a plectrum or, or your fingers right now, just play that open E string. That's what the tablature tells us to do. Okay, so, just play that open E string. That's it. That's it. Alright. So, here, alright, hold on, I need to get off. I was uh, um, blocking uh, the tablature here. Here, we have to play the open A string. Okay, here we need to play the open A string. Okay, so, again, how do we do that? Well, we go to our guitar. Again, we hopefully are starting to put together the names of everything. And we play the open A string. Okay. Next, we have, all right, what open string, let me ask you, what open string am I to play here? Okay, what open string am I to play here? Are you to play here? Andrew, Debbie, very good. Gary, very good. All right, uh, James, very good. All right, so it is a D string, right? It is the open D string. So again, this means that we have to find our D string. Here it is. And I play that. Okay. Next, what about here? What open string am I supposed to play here? Alright, hopefully you're seeing the, the pattern here. Alright, hopefully you are seeing the pattern here. Uh, Vasi, Giannis, uh, very good. It is indeed the G string. Alright, next. We have the open what string? Open body, very good. All right, what string? What open string? All right, Linda, very good. John, Gary, Debbie, very good. All right, the open B string. Dawn, very good. Bronwyn, uh, almost Bronwyn. All right, so it is the open B string. And then finally we have... All right, this tab tells us to play the open high E string. Okay, so um, this is the um, basics of the tablature notation. Now, here is our first example of having another number other than the tablature, uh, other than the number zero. Okay, this tablature, I'm just going to tell you, and then the next one I'm going to ask you, right? This tablature, or tab for short, right? This tab tells me that I need to play the first fret of the low E string, right? So when I see something like this, right? Right, Andrew, almost it's the low E, right? The low E, the fattest string, Right? And again, I put my finger on that first fret, all right? And again, it's right behind that first fret, okay? So that is what this tablature tells me to do. So first fret of the low E string. Now, 
What fret and what string am I to play here? What fret and what string am I supposed to play here? Okay. Uh, Michael, very good. Andrew, John, yes, very good. Indeed, it is the first fret of the B string. First fret of the B string. Right? So, that means that if I were to see this, if you were to see this, or as we can all see this now, right, I'm just picking that one note. Right, I'm just picking that one string, playing that one note. Bronwyn, yes, very good. All right, now here, right, here we have a different number, right, but this tells us to do something else. It gives us a very, very clear definition of what to do. All right, here, what do we do? What finger, what fret, what do you think? I mean, I'm sorry, what fret, what string, Andrew? Very good. Second fret of the A string. Second fret of the A string. Okay, and then we have here the second fret of the G string. All right, so again, if we were to see this, we would have to all right, find the G string first, all right, then first fret, second fret, all right, and then I play that note, okay? A couple more things about tablature notation, all right? We're going to be required, you are going to be required to play more than one note at a time, okay? Sometimes we would see something like this, all right? Like in, if you are reading English, like if you're reading French or Spanish, right? In Western music, right? We, and also in tablature notation, we read from left to right, okay? So this means that first I play the first fret of the high E string. Then, after I play that, I play the second fret of the B string. Then I play the third fret of the G string, and then the fourth fret of the D string. Okay? And. Okay? So, this is what we're going to see, this is what you will see. Uh, later on in today's lesson and from the re and to the rest of this course, you're going to see notes from left to right from each other. And also, you will see something like this, right? This number two, which is on the second fret of the B string and the first fret of the high E string, right, shows us, right, and, and they are vertically aligned. So whenever you have numbers that are vertically aligned, like in this case, the second fret of the B string and the first fret of the high E string, right, you are to play these two in unison. Okay, so this would look a little something like this. I'd have my two fingers. Right, exactly, Andrew. You would play them at the same time. Right? If they are in vertical alignment with each other, like so. Right? Now, if you have notes that are, you can read from left to right, that means you would play them individually. All right? But if they are in vertical alignment, you play them together. So, are you all ready for a pop quiz? You all ready for a very quick pop quiz? All right? So... On what fret and string do we play what is written? Alright, so the fret should be easy, the string not so much, but you know what, I'm going to help you all out. Alright, I'm going to pop up the strings right there. So, what do you think, Paul? Yes, very good. Um, yeah, uh, Manaf, almost, John. This is the sixth fret of the D string. Sixth fret of the D string. Dawn. Alright. Then we have, what about here? What about here? Alright. What fret, what string? Alright, I'll give you a couple 
more seconds. All right, now I'm going to pop up. Now the strings. Very good, Monoff. All right, Gary, yes. Very good. It is the 13th fret of the B string. All right, very good. All right, what about here? Remember, what happens when strings are in vertical alignment with each other? How are we supposed to play this now? All right, how are we supposed to play this now? All right, what fret and what strings? All right, Monoff, absolutely great time. Dawn, add the, as says, at the same time, absolutely. So the fifth fret of the low E string, seventh fret of the D string. Very good, very good, very good. All right, and then, last but not least, all right, what about here? How are we supposed to play this? All right, do we play this in unison or do we play these separately? Okay, and then also what fret, what string, right? What fret and what string? All right, yes, absolutely, Andrew, very good. All right, we play these separately. First, we play the 17th fret of the high E string, and then we play the 12th fret of the G string, All right? Again, we play them separately because they are not in vertical alignment. They follow from left to right. Okay, so again, just a short little pop quiz. Hopefully, all right, you all know now, the, can retain a, a bit of the basics of uh, what we need to do with our fingers, uh, some of the parts of the guitar, and also tablature notation and our standard tuning. All right, now, if you do have any questions about any of this, uh, just please hold on to the uh, until the Q&A session at uh, the end of uh, the lesson, uh, because now it's time to level up and uh, learn some of the basic techniques that we need to learn. All right, and this includes holding a guitar, picking a guitar, and fretting a guitar. All right, so uh, here we have a wonderful gentleman who is showing us how to hold a guitar. Now, this is very important, okay? For many people out there, okay, it's much easier to get a right-handed guitar, right? So, as a result, many left-handed people learn how to play on a right-handed guitar. But when you're playing on a right-handed guitar, you need to make sure that you are holding it correctly. All right? So if you are right-handed, or if you're playing on a right-handed guitar, whether you are right-handed or left-handed, but playing on a right-handed guitar, right, the body is in front of you, the neck is to the left, okay, and the right hand is going to be the picking and strumming hand, the left hand is going to be the fretting hand. All right? Now, if you are left-handed and playing a left-handed guitar, right, this is very important, if you are playing a left-handed guitar, right, again, the neck, the body is in front of you, but the neck will go to your right, right? The left hand picks, all right, and the right hand will be fretting, okay? Now, whether you're playing on a right-handed guitar or left-handed guitar, the technique that we're going to learn in this class is the same for both, okay? Except uh, if you're a lefty, just do the opposite of what I'm doing, okay? Because I'm playing on a right-handed guitar. Okay, so, picking a guitar. How do we pick a guitar? Now, we learned earlier in today's class, right, in today's lesson, that we can either finger-pick or we can use this device called a plectrum, okay? And a plectrum is that little piece usually made out of plastic these days. Some people make it with lots of different um, uh, designs and, and materials. Basically, it's this little triangular-shaped uh, device that helps us pick and strum our notes. So basically, you hold the pick in between your thumb and your index finger in your picking hand, okay, and that is what you use, all right, now, here's my pick, here's my
my plectrum, and again, I hold it here, and I have kind of the pointiest tip, now it's kind of worn away, but I have the pointiest tip, alright, ready to do whatever, whatever I need it to do, okay? Now, a question I get a lot is how thick should my pick be? Well, it depends entirely up to you. And, uh, you know, it took me about 10 or 15 years before I settled on the pick that I'm using now, and I haven't changed using my pick in the last 10 years. Uh, I mean, I get new ones of the same one, basically, but it's the same thickness, same thing for me, but, again, it took me a while until I found something I was really comfortable with. All right? Then we have finger picking, all right, where the thumb, all right, technically is, should be resting on the low E string, ready to play any of those bassier, any of those thicker strings, and the fingers, which are down below, ready to pick the notes individually on the higher strings, meaning the higher pitch strings. So, how do we get into that position? Well, give the thumbs up. Y'all having a good time? All right? Y'all having a good time? So, give the thumbs up. If you are right-handed, or if you are, I should say more precisely, if you are playing on a right-handed guitar, your right hand, all right, is your picking hand. So, you give the thumbs up, you turn it 90 degrees to the left, all right, so your thumbs up becomes a thumbs to the left, all right? Now, on your screen, it probably points to the right because, you know, everything's backwards <laughs> on the screen should be doing this with like a mirror or something. But anyway, you have this thumbs to the left, and you have this fist, right? So, you put the thumb so that it's laying on that low E string, and then you let your fingers just naturally drop, and they are to the right and down below the thumb, ready to do the picking. Now, lots of people, when they go to pick a guitar, you know, they're kind of in this position and they think they have to, you know, kind of get it. That's how they pick. But this is incorrect, right? And if you are in this position, that's okay. We can fix that. What you want to do is basically turn on the faucet, right? Turn on like you're turning on your water, right? And there we are, right? That would get you into the position as well. Now, if you're left-handed, you give the thumbs up, whoop, <laughs> all right, and then you make a thumbs to the right, all right, and then you put your finger, your thumb on the low E string, you drop your fingers, and it's down to the left of your um, thumb, okay, and again, whether you're playing on a left-handed guitar or a right-handed guitar, the low E string, the thickest string is that first string that you can see. Right. So, that is how we pick, finger pick a guitar. That is the proper position of our hand. And then, last but not least, is fretting. Okay, and fretting is very important because that's how we get to play our notes. And this is probably the thing that's kind of difficult for lots of beginners because this is where our fingers hurt a little bit. But... I uh, will tell you that that pain goes away very quickly the more you play. All right. So, like I said earlier, when I ask you to let's say play the pick, uh, I'm sorry, fret, the first fret of the low E string. Right. I find the first fret and I place my finger right behind the fret and then I play. If I need to find the fifth fret, I go one, two. Four, five. All right. Fifth fret of the D string. So this is E A D. Fifth fret of the D string. Okay. There we go. All right. So we're gonna learn more and more about how to do this. We're gonna take it slowly, obviously. Um, but that is generally how we fret. All right. Oh, one more thing that I forgot to say is let me move this over here. The position of my thumb behind the neck is very important. Your thumb needs to be, okay, in the middle of the neck. If your thumb is down here, right, that's no good. 
It needs to be at least in this position, right, in the middle of your neck. Now, if you have really huge hands and really big fingers and your thumb kind of, let me put this back there, and your thumb kind of comes over saying hello, that's kind of okay. I'll let that go for now. All right, so we learned how to hold a guitar, pick a guitar, and fret a guitar. So it's time to level up. It's time to get to the songs for today. And the first song is Nothing Else Matters from the band Metallica. And the second song is from the White Stripes, the band The White Stripes, called Seven Nation Army. Okay? And what we have here is now putting the tablature into effect, right? Putting that, what we just learned, into practice right away, just to, you know, again, throw you in, uh, in what's the term? I think throw you into the lines or with the lines or something right away. Okay, so we have the low E string that we need to play, the G string, the B string, and the high E string. Okay, so this is what we need to play. Right? And that's it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put myself in the corner here and demonstrate this to you. If you want to try to play along right away, you can. Okay. Um, but we're going to take it a little bit more slowly as well. Alright, so... If you are using your fingers, right, we have the fingers that you are supposed to pick with, right, indicated on top of each note. So again, we have the low E string, the G string, the B string, the high E string, the B string, and the G string. Okay? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. When you're doing this, you can as well. Just do all down picks on each individual string. Alright, John says, easy, wonderful, wonderful. Well, let's do it all together a couple times just so we can, you know, get some practice in it, get some, uh, some, some playing in. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Any questions, anybody? Any questions? 
Um, where's uh, Nick? I'll get to that question in just a little bit. Okay. So let's do it a couple more times, ladies and gentlemen. A couple more times. All right. So here we go. Oh, one, two, three. A little faster. Timing 
and everything when we get to lesson five. So don't really worry too much about all the different like uh, like lines and curved lines and everything like that. Most important thing for now is to try to follow the um, orange uh, dots, okay? Uh, the orange circles, okay? So. Um, Job. So let's try it about one or two more times, and then we'll wrap it up, all right? So here we have two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Ready. And two. Ready. And. All right. Great job, everybody. Let's try it again. One, two, ready, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, and two, three, and four. Okay. So, let's do it one more time. One, two, ready, and open A. Two, ready, and two, three, and four. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps it up for today's lesson. Okay, so I want to go through a quick summary. We did a whole lot today. We talked about the different styles of guitar and how everything that we do in this course is applicable to every style. We learned our essential terminology. We learned the basic techniques, how to hold a guitar, how to pick a guitar, and we went through the lesson one songs. So, ladies and gentlemen...